become one of the country's largest flea markets. And as Kathy Thurman reports, it's a family affair that would make Monty Hall jealous. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to First Monday, Ripley's First Monday. Just a little information concerning them. You can find uh, farm animals, domestic animals, uh, handicrafts, utensils, tools, you name it, you look around and you can find it. That's what we like, I told you. I can't do that. <laughs> That's what we like, I told you. I can't do it. It's, uh, it's more entertainment than I guess. People don't really come to First Monday to buy anything particular. It's so entertaining, but they do buy when they come. You can find anything at First Monday that's ever been just about, and all the new, new merchandise, too. So if you're looking for an odd item, you can usually find it here at First Monday. It used to be a drive-in theater. Now it's the site of the largest flea market in the state of Mississippi, and one of the largest in the country. Dealers from all over the country are scattered over 30 acres. It takes another 20 acres just to handle the parking. This is Ripley, Mississippi, about 80 miles southeast of Memphis. The event, first Monday, but buyers and sellers and traders and lookers start pouring in on Friday before the first Monday of every month. Mud puddles shape the pathways, but still traffic on Highway 15 looks like the New Jersey Turnpike during rush hour. This is Wild Bill Pruitt, as he is known. He and his wife, Edith, of Covington, Tennessee, are taking home a pickup truck filled with living room furniture. I just come now and then, about every third month. You see the same old junk every time anyway. <laughs> well, you got some junk this time, though, right? Yeah, I don't know spend this much money, though, I tell you that. Too much money. <laughs> How much you spend? Oh, $349. Lord, I could took a blonde out and had a ball for two or three weekends on that money. <laughs> I get her to stay at home. Do you have a lot of fun when you come here? Yeah, we come just to live. We enjoy it. We don't buy it. We retired. We got a thing to do but just drink good whiskey and run after good looking women. <laughs> and come to first Monday? Come to first Monday, spend your damn money. Ain't that something? You see them coming from uh, counties up in Tennessee. They come from everywhere. And that doesn't include who comes from down south, you know, up, up 315, I guess. But it's unbelievable. It really is. John Enderbitson and his wife make the trip each month from Memphis. What's the most unusual thing you've ever purchased? Gosh. I really couldn't tell you. Almost everything we purchased down here is unusual. <laughs> uh, 40 or 50 year old toolboxes. Uh, Handicrafts, you name it, it's it, it, you just really can't. Six pack of chocolate soldier. Six pack of chocolate soldier, diet so chocolate soldier. That was the most unusual. The first Monday trade day is rich in tradition. It has not this always is been kilowatt here five, the kilowatt five, kilowatt Indiana radio, K5, KIR in Ripley, Monday, Mississippi. Uh, in 1893, when some of the local merchants knew about some of the sale days that were being held in some of the other communities in the South, and they advertised that they would have special sales and they invited the farmers to come in uh, on the first Monday of each month. And that would be the day that the uh, sheriff was also holding his sales of property for tax purposes and so forth. So it began that way. Holding his Ripley librarian Tommy Covington is president of the Tippa County Historical Society. He's been collecting material on Ripley's first Monday for 12 years. The uh, farmers 
did come in and spend all day there. And it has changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, it has been at two or three different locations. And during the 1960s, it turned into what we know today as a flea market. But it was not a flea market originally. What was it like originally? Just a lot of horse trading? or what? Horse trading, mules, uh, the farmers trading uh, what they had to sell. And uh, the old photographs that we have show the town square just filled with wagons and mules. And uh, that's basically what it was. There were no women attending First Monday in the early days. <laughs> uh, the, the men came to town to attend to the business. and. I have uh, heard my grandmother say that she uh, came to town about twice a year to do her shopping. And uh, <laughs> my grandfather, of course, came several times a year, usually on first Monday, too. Because of threats from officials of the Humane Society on animal violations, the city of Ripley discontinued sponsoring the trade day in January 1978. And that's where Wayne Wyndham comes in. Is you going to expand? No. Uh, well, I take that back. We, we're adding some extra parking lots for, for the customer to park in, but not the dealers. Wyndham is now the owner and operator of First Monday. How did you get involved? Well, I had a grocery store across the street, and uh, people would come in on Sunday afternoon to uh, go to the market on Monday. So they came over and asked me, could they set up in my parking lot on Sunday? And I rented them a spot, and the next thing I know, uh, that store was just covered up with dealers selling merchandise. So in uh, self-preservation, I had to move them down here to get them out of the front of my store. So that's how I got involved, just being at the right place at the right time might be a good answer for that. Wyndham says he has worked hard over the years to combat the bad publicity concerning the treatment of animals at First Monday. Could I have the attention of all the animal dealers, dog dealers, chicken dealers? We have a rule here at First Monday that all animals must have water in their cages at all times. If we find anyone not following this room, you might be asked to leave. So be sure that all animals have water and cover if possible. We thank you for your cooperation. Thank you. We have no problem. We have uh, strict rules we go by, and we see that those rules are enforced. If we get a complaint, we go right out and check it out and be sure that there's, there's no violations. Tell me about that. Jimmy Mayo of New Albany, Mississippi, has been coming to First Monday since he was seven. We started when it was up here in town, then he went to the fire to the fire grounds, then from the fire grounds down here. Most of the people this is Kellawatt 5, Kellawatt, Indiana Radio, K-5, K-I-R, Ripley, Mississippi. 95% of them like the preacher there. He's got a bunch of beagles. <laughs> you can talk to everybody. Everybody will tell you the same thing. You run across some people that don't take care of the dogs, but 95% of the people that does handle dogs and sees after takes care of them. You don't do make much money. You don't do a lot of trading. A.W. Davis of Somerville, Tennessee, can remember when first Monday trade day was on the town square. It wasn't near as big as it is down here. <laughs> Because the town would have been over full. There was a lot of trading, horse trading going on up there then. Instead of more dog trading, there's a more horse trading. It's all in good fun. If you come up here and say like a greenhorn, it won't take you but one or two trips to learn you who to trade with, who not to trade with. So most of these people do. That's all they do. How would you trade on her? And which other uh, I don't know. I swear it was $25 from Paris with her and $25. Too high on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Yeah. Now, nah, you told me good dogs is, is pretty good price right now. Yeah. You need that, you need that other dog. I got old side on what side of the truck to go with that dog right there. Yeah, I do, but I uh, I'd start we and put this dog in. I'd put them, put them together. Mm -mm. I'd put them together. All right. I'll do that. <laughs> now I'll trade you with you like that. How much you give them? How much you want to give between them two of us and her? I'll have to look at them again. <laughs> <laughs>
time of year we have a lot of dealers from up north that's going south, and in the spring we have a lot of dealers going back north. So there's always plenty of dealers? There's always plenty of dealers. $20 a piece for all four jars. I've you got, got nine of them. If you give me $20 a piece for all nine of them, I'll take no, it. If you don't, I will, I won't. I will for six. No, I take 30 dollars a piece for six. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I take 25 for six. LMA Chapel combs the state auctions in Indiana and then heads to First Monday in Ripley each month. We drive about 529 miles to come to this market each month. Do you make money? Well, we make enough. Make enough to pay our trip and enjoy yourself while we're here. Do, do some of the people drive a hard bargain or uh, you try K -I -R, to K I R kilowatt yeah, five kilowatt Indiana radio in Ripley, Mississippi. Some we have to bargain a lot with them too. We got some more to get out of here. Another one too, if you need it. We got it. I guarantee you. I guarantee you he'll sell them. If you don't believe it, we gotta go. Come on up. One of the regulars is Robert Tedford, a furniture dealer from Tupelo, Mississippi. Yes, ma'am. Could I help you, ma'am? Well, just look at what I want you to look. I want to talk you into something. Yeah. Huh? I bet you will. How about you, sir? No, sir, not too much. Wyndham keeps tabs on the operation by riding through the buyers and sellers on a golf cart. Most of your people are from... Memphis, Alabama, or Tennessee, Alabama. Uh, where do you, where is this stuff made at? Tennessee, Mississippi? No, made up in those Ark Mountains, Arkansas. Some of them do good, some of them don't do as well. In fact, we have some that come where they sell anything or not. It really doesn't make them bad. It's mostly retiring people that uh, they want something to do, and they, they get to know all these people, and... Uh, well, if somebody's missing, they'll come say, hey, is he sick or what's wrong? He's not here this morning. So it's kind of a family type thing. They get to know these people and they just want to come and be with them. And what's a trade day without a grist mill? Emmett Vinson of Middleton, Tennessee has been coming each month for seven years. Just a hobby. It, it, you don't do it for money. If you did, you'd go broke. Only way you can make a living out of it is eat it. <laughs> or swap it for turnips and salad and beans and stuff like that. Hey, Benny, let's see if we can find a, a space here to find. We gotta put some more people in. Wyndham will tell you this first Monday business is a family affair. His wife, Betty, keeps up with the vendors. That's a big job because on some weekends, there are as many as a thousand of them. The average attendance is around 40,000 people every month over the four-day sale period. In addition to Betty, it takes over a dozen other family members to run the show. This is 71-year-old Clara Gaddis. You can call her Mama. Everyone else does. She's rolled as many as 1,200 pies in one day. Folks love them. Oh, they think they're just delicious. Finger licking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what makes them so good? Well, I tell you what I think makes them five so good. Five kilowatt the Indiana radio, K5, K-I-R, in Ripley, Mississippi. What do you fry the pies in? Pure lard. Pure grease. <laughs> that is what makes them good. <laughs> come to First Monday for all kinds of reasons. Carrie Dunlap of Mount Pleasant, Mississippi. I love it. What makes it so unique? The low prices and, I mean, you have a selection to choose from, you know, so pretty neat. 169 a pound. That little jewel cost you uh, 34 years. Memphis Fire Marshal Hubert Crossnine. 
Yeah, we were here about uh, about a month ago, and we've enjoyed it, and it's uh, it's a little different. Every time you come down here, you see something different. What makes it unique to you? Well, it, it's, it's not planned. It seems like it just happens, you know, and I think that's really uh, what we enjoy. It's uh, a original buoy, 1860. Very few of them made. Made, made in Sheffield, ain't it? Yeah. 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 Monday supports a small community. The population of Ripley is about 4,500. Well, it puts new life in the business. You see all these people, and we have hundreds of families from out of town come in here and shop. Wayne Griffin owns this grocery store in Ripley. He says business goes up about 25% this time every month. Do you look forward to first Monday as a businessman? I really do really look forward to it because we know that the impact it's going to have on business, on Ripley as a whole, not just the grocery, but everyone in Ripley, in this area. I think it's the industry of the future. All over the country, flea markets are springing up and it's... Kilowatt 5, Kilowatt Indiana Radio, K5, KIR in Ripley, Mississippi, including the uh, retailing test of first Monday.